students today we will discuss minerals the importance of minerals in our diet is emphasized by the fact that iron deficiency anemia is one of the three major public health problems in india the increasing number of fractures in elderly increasing incidence of high blood pressure drawing our attention towards the importance of two minerals calcium and sodium liberal intake of calcium with increased mobility along with exposure to sunlight is known to improve the strength of bone and reduce their fragility uh, reduction in the salt intake has been uh, known to one of the helpful factors in reducing blood pressure among minerals calcium and uh, iron deficiency commonly occurs due to lack of uh, these minerals in our diet uh, iodine deficiency occur in people who live in certain hilly tract areas where uh, water and soil is deficient in iodine uh, addition of extra salt in the diet is of special importance in tropical countries uh, because uh, salts are uh, lost through sweat in excessive amount during uh, hot days deficiency of other minerals normally do not occur in average diet minerals are inorganic constituents of our food it lives as as residues when burned 4 to 6 percent of total body weight consists of minerals it means 2 to 3 kg of uh, adult human body consists of minerals the body contain 24 minerals and these minerals must be supplied through the diet these includes calcium phosphorus potassium sodium chlorine magnesium iron zinc copper manganese fluorine iodine chromium cadmium selenium molybdenum etc irons present in the food and tissue in three forms as inorganic salt uh, for example in the form of sodium chloride and calcium phosphate in combination with organic compounds such as phosphoprotein phospholipid hemoglobin and chiefly occur in the form of ionic form uh, that is sodium ion potassium ion chloride ions minerals have two distinct characteristics they do not provide energy and they are they generally do not uh, destroy during normal food preparation minerals uh, it maintains acid base, base balance in our body. It is very important to maintain constant pH of the body fluids at all time to ensure normal body functions. It maintains water balance, sodium, pot potassium and uh, chloride ions. They are responsible for maintaining the water balance in our body. Contraction of muscle and response to nervous stimuli are regulated by minerals. Uh, minerals as a salts are important constituent of our skeleton they provide strength to bone and teeth and also they maintain the health of bone and teeth and uh, some uh, zinc zinc provide structural integrity to proteins which are important for the transcription of the dna it uh, calcium it is essential for the clotting of the blood and as component and cofactors of vitamins hormones and enzymes they are involved in many metabolic activities in our body for example iodine it is required for the synthesis of thyroxine hormones which regulates energy metabolism in our body zinc is essential constituent of enzyme carbonic anhydrase and it is also important constituent in insulin uh, cobalt it is a integral part of vitamin b12 sulfur important part of the thymine based on the amount present in our body minerals are classified as macro minerals and micro minerals macro minerals are those minerals which found in our body in larger level and they their requirement is also larger more than 100 milligram micro minerals are those minerals which are present in our body in a small amount and their requirement is also small lesser than 
100 mg macro minerals include calcium phosphorus sulfur potassium chlorine and sodium micro minerals include iron fluorine iodine zinc copper chromium selenium cobalt and manganese now we will study calcium it is macro minerals uh, 1.5 to 2 percent of body weight is consist of calcium and it means that 1600 to 2000 gram of adult typical adult human body consists of calcium 99 percent of this is present in bone and teeth and one percent of calcium is found in body fluids and soft tissue now functions of calcium Calcium is required for the formation of bone and teeth and also maintenance of the health of bone and teeth. Calcium is required for the contraction and relaxation of the muscle including heartbeat. It controls transmission of nerve impulses. It increases absorption by increasing the permeability of cell membrane. Calcium is required for normal clotting of the blood. It activates many enzymes, for example, pancreatic lipase, adenosine triphosphatase, and certain proteolytic enzymes are activated by calcium. And they help in the absorption of vitamin B12 in our ileum. On an average, 20 to 30 percent of calcium, ingested calcium is absorbed in our body. There are many factors which increase or decrease calcium absorption. The factors which favors absorption of calcium are vitamin D, low pH, presence of lactose, fat in low concentration, high protein, vitamin C and body needs. Efficient utilization of calcium occurs during rapid growth period. And the factors which inhibit calcium are lack of vitamin D, high fat intake, phosphates and phytic acid, oxalic acid, alkaline medium and excess of fiber. High fat intake, it, it forms uh, insoluble complex of calcium with fatty acid and excreted through the uh, feces. Phosphates and phytic acids are found in whole cereals, brands and some legumes. They bind calcium and make it unavailable in our body. Oxalic acids are found in certain foods such as tea, coffee, cocoa and uh, green leafy vegetables. It also binds calcium, make it unavailable in the body. Alkaline medium also decreases calcium absorption by forming tricalcium phosphate which is insoluble and excreted. Excess of fibers also hinders calcium absorption. During rapid growth period, diet should have calcium phosphorus in the ratio of 1 is to 1. The calcium requirement decreases when body attains the status of the uh, uh, adult because during this period calcium is required only for the maintenance and during this period the requirement of calcium is relatively and absolute, absolutely lower than the phosphorus. Thus calcium and phosphorus ratio is highest in the young age and it decreases with attainment of adult status and again in female it increases during pregnancy and lactation. Deficiency of calcium in children adversely affects the growth. The skeletal frame does not mineralize properly and becomes weak and uh, un, uh, un, uh, unable to support the growth of the uh, support the weight of the body. Rickets, which is the manifestation of calcium as well as vitamin D deficiency, is characterized by craniotavis, delayed closure of frontalis, bulging and bossing of forehead, soft and fragile bones, bow leg, knock knees, enlargement of ankles and wrist, and pigeon chest. Uh, teeth of the children is also uh, adversely affected. Uh, there will be crack and pits all over the enamel and it may lead to the decay of the teeth and the deficiency also lead to hyperitability, tetanus leading to death. Deficiency of calcium in adult causes osteomalacia. Osteomalacia is racket-like condition. 
uh, the bone becomes soft and uh, unable to bear the weight of body it may either bend or break in osteomalacia the composition of the bone alter the level of calcium and phosphorus reduces very low and the bone becomes translucent sometimes there is gradual demineralization of bony tissue characterized by porosity thinness and fragility of the bones known as osteoporosis osteoporosis is due to decreased calcium absorption with age in this osteoporosis there is chemical composition is same but there is decrease in the density of the bone milk is the best source of calcium because calcium content in milk is accompanied by favorable proportion of the phosphorus and therefore it is well utilized in our body milk and milk products such as yogurt dahi paneer mawa they are good source of calcium milk powder small dried fish sesame seed with husk are rich source of calcium ragi among all the cereals and millers it contain 344 mg of uh, calcium per 100 g small fish if eaten with bones uh, provide substantial quantities of the calcium in our diet and green leafy vegetables are also good source of calcium now rda for calcium daily allowance of 600 mg has been recommended for adult men and women but the, during pregnancy and lactation the need increases and the additional 600 mg has been recommended now phosphorus phosphorus along with, along with calcium contributes to supporting a structure in our body it is the second most abundant mineral in our body and uh, phosphorus is about 1% of the body weight and 85% of this is found in bone and teeth and rest is found in soft tissue and body fluid as a soluble phosphate ions phosphorus is present in the body as in organic salt of phosphoric acid or in combination with organic compound the important organic compounds which contain phosphorus are phospholipids that is lecithin and cephalin nucleoprotein and nucleic acid creatine phosphate atp adp coenzyme 1 2 co-carboxylase hexose phosphates triose phosphates and glycero phosphates along with calcium it is needed for the formation of bone and teeth it helps in fat absorption and transport with add of coenzyme a and atp it is essential constituent of nucleic acid and nucleic protein as a part of atp and adp essential in energy metabolism as a components of enzyme needed in carbohydrate fat and protein metabolism as a part of buffer salts it maintains acid base balance in our body and it is needed for formation of phospholipid cephalin and lecithin are important component of our structure and they also uh, help in the absorption of the fat and metabolism deficiency of phosphorus is not common because uh, it is widely distributed in food however deficiency may be observed in some conditions like uh, persons using large amount of antacids or suffer from excessive loss in urine or premature infants may suffer from deficiency of phosphorus vitamin d deficiency and prolonged parental nutrition that is intravenous nutrition may cause deficiency of phosphorus deficiency disorders are osteomalacia same like calcium myopathy muscle disease growth failure defects in leukocyte function now sources of phosphorus meat fish egg milk are important source of phosphorus phosphorus are also present in cereal millets pulses and arsen oil seeds some seeds contain phosphorus in the form of phytic acid which are not available in available form requirement of phosphorus is same as that of calcium sodium is the mineral that is present only in small quantities in most natural food salt which is used as a salt, uh, test giver generally increases the concentration of sodium in cooked food 
Sodium is predominant ion in extracellular fluid. It is an electrolyte that play an important role in maintaining blood pressure. The adult body contains about 100 gram of sodium ion, most of which is found in extracellular fluid. It is also found in muscles, bone and tissue cells. It exists in the body in association with chloride, bicarbonate, phosphate, lactates and propionate. Now we will learn functions of phosphorus. It regulates acid base balance of the body. It regulates osmotic pressure of plasma and tissue fluids which protects the body against excessive fluid loss, keeps calcium and other minerals soluble in the blood as well as stimulating the adrenal glands. It helps in the absorption of monosaccharide and amino acid from a small intestine. It in initiates and maintains maintains the heartbeat. Deficiency of sodium occurs in athlete and person engaged in heavy work. Because uh, substantial amount of sodium is lost in sweat and uh, this loss must be replaced by taking extra intake of salt and liberal uh, quantities of fluid and special care should be taken during hot days. Deficiency of sodium ion leads to hyponatremia, in which the serum sodium level is below normal, that is below 135 milli equivalent per liter. Symptoms of hyponatremia include severe dehydration, weakness, giddiness, nausea, lethargy, muscle cramps, decrease in blood volume, decrease in blood pressure, and circulatory failure. Hyponatremia may also occur in some condition like prolonged vomiting and diarrhea, chronic renal disease and Addison's disease. Sodium chloride is the best source of sodium in our diet. Other sources are milk, egg white, meat, poultry, fish and some vegetables such as spinach, beets and celery. Vegetables, fruits, cereals and legumes contains low amount of sodium. On an average we consume 5 to 10 gram of sodium chloride. About 0.6 to 3.5 gram is an adequate daily intake and extra intake is recommended during hot climate or after heavy work. Potassium is the third most abundant mineral in the body. It is a cation of intracellular fluid and it is also an important constituent of extracellular fluid. As a constituent of extracellular fluid, it influences muscle activity. Functions of potassium. Function, potassium is a integral component of all cells. Hence, the greater the number of cells, the more is in the increase in the potassium. It is essential for growth and build up of tissue. For every 6.25 gram of uh, tissue protein is synthesized is accompanied by retention of 114 milligram potassium in the tissue. It maintains osmotic pressures and fluid balance within the cell and same uh, uh, function is performed by sodium in extracellular fluid. It is an essential constituent of extracellular fluid and it maintains the activity of the muscles. It is essential for the synthesis of glycogen. For every 1 gram glycogen is synthesized, it is accompanied by retention of 14 milligram potassium in our body. It is required for normal muscular contraction. Under normal dietary intake, deficiency does not occur. All foods are a source of potassium and hence potassium deficiency is not likely to occur in normal subjects. But there are certain conditions where potassium deficiency may occur. These are severe malnutrition, chronic alcoholism, anorexia nervosa, this is a type of eating disorder, low carbohydrate diet, weight reduction regimes and during treatment of heart failure with certain drugs and diabetic coma with insulin. Symptoms of hypokalemia, that is low level of potassium. The symptoms of hypokalemia includes muscular weakness, irritability, paralysis, tachycardia, that is rapid heartbeat, dilation of the heart with gallop rhythm and changes in electrocardiogram of the heart. Prolonged hypokalemia is likely to cause injury to myocardium and kidney. 
hyperkalemia that is marked elevation of serum potassium may occur in certain conditions like renal failure, severe dehydration, addition's disease and intravenous administration of excessive amount of potassium salts. The signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia are cardiac and central nervous system depression. All natural foods are rich source of potassium. However, some foods which contain particularly more amount of potassium are banana, raisins, apricots, oranges, dates, watermelon, spinach, carrots, potato, sweet potato, mushrooms, peas, lentils, dried beans, peanuts, milk yogurt, and lean meats. Daily potassium intake from an average diet in adult may range from 2 to 4 grams per day. The minimum RDA of potassium is 2 gram per day for adult and 1.5 gram per day for children. Iron is micro minerals. Iron is a trace mineral that is necessary for normal body function and good health. It is found in a small amount in our body, only about 4 to 5 gram in human body is found. But it, it is very important in our body. 70% of this is in a functional form as a constituent of hemoglobin, myoglobin and a number of enzymes that catalyzes oxidation and reduction process in the cell. The remaining 30% is storage iron. It is stored in the liver and bone marrow as ferritin and hemocytrin. Transferrin or sidrophilin are circulating form of iron. Now functions of iron, iron is present in hemoglobin and myoglobin. As a constituent of hemoglobin, it helps in transport of oxygen from lungs to the tissues and returns CO2 from the tissue to the lungs. Myoglobin is protein iron complexes found in muscles and it acts as a reservoir of oxygen. Oxygen is needed to combine with nutrient to release energy which power muscular contraction. Several oxidase enzymes such as catalase, cytochrome oxidase, xanthin oxidase contain iron as integral part of their molecular structure. They play in the role in the conversion of beta carotene to vitamin A, synthesis of purines that is the integral part of DNA and RNA and collagen, a type of protein found in connective tissue, clearance of blood lipids and detoxification of drug in the liver. Iron needs of body are met by three, three ways. First, use of iron released from RBC over and over again. When the lifespan of RBC is over after 120 days, then iron is removed from the RBC. It is sent to bone marrow where it is used for the formation of new RBC. Then iron needs of body are also met by absorption of iron from the diet and third use of stores of ferritin that is a storage form of iron in our body. Absorption of iron from food takes place mostly in duodenum and small intestine. On an average only 3 to 10 percent iron is absorbed by well nourished adult with normal hemoglobin level. In foods and tissue, iron occurs in two forms heme iron and non heme iron. Heme iron is obtained from animals food, non heme iron is obtained from plant foods and heme iron is readily absorbed in our body. Iron of uh, animal origin is better absorbed 10 to 20 percent than the vegetable iron which is absorbed only 1 to 2 percent. The absorption of iron is a complex process influenced by intestinal mucosa. Uh, amount and the chemical nature of the iron and a variety of factors which uh, increase or decrease iron absorption. Increased acidity either from the food or from gastric secretion. It enhances iron absorption by forming a red blue soluble and available uh, iron complex. Animal tissue proteins such as meat, fish, egg if it, it, it is eaten in the meal, then it enhances the iron absorption by 2 to 4 fold from the meal. Body need. When there is greater body need, then the iron absorption will be also more. 
Well, during the rapid growth period, more iron is absorbed. During uh, blood loss, more iron is absorbed. Lactoferrin and lacto lactalbumin, which is found in milk, also enhances the iron absorption. Calcium also promotes iron absorption. Phytates, which is found in cereal, bran, and some legumes, they bind iron and make it unavailable. Oxalates found in green leafy vegetable, tea, cocoa, and coffee, it also binds iron, make it un unavailable in the body. Poly polyphenols are organic compound found in uh, some fruits and vegetables, and uh, they also make insoluble complexes and excreted. Certain infection also reduces iron. Deficiency of iron is due to increased uh, requirement in the body, malabsorption or decreased dietary intake or uh, blood loss from the body. Deficiency of iron causes anemia when there is insufficiency of iron for the formation of hemoglobin then red blood cell becomes small and pale and it is called microcytic hypochromatic anemia. The, this type of anemia is the most common form of anemia throughout the world and the women in reproductive age and children are most affected group. Clinical features of anemia are general fatigue, glassy jude, breathlessness, giddiness, palpitations, pale skin, inability to concentrate, edema, fragile, brittle and cracked nails, cholentia that is spoon shaped nail, pale red and smooth tongue. In severe cases, it may lead to anginal pain and heart failure. Liver, other organ meats, lean meats, fish, poultry, egg are heme source and they are readily absorbed in our body. Among plant sources, pulses, nuts, sesame, dried foods such as figs, raisins, dried days, whole grains, green leafy vegetables, namely fenugreek, amaranth, mint, coriander, drumstick, radish greens, lotus stems, cauliflower greens and turnip greens are a uh, good source of iron. Jaggery and rice flakes contains inorganic iron because they, they are processed in the iron vessels and they are fair source of iron. 17 milligram per day has been recommended for men whereas in women 21 milligram per day has been recommended. During pregnancy and lactation iron needs increases 35 milligram per day has been recommended in pregnancy and 21 milligram has been recommended during lactation. With this Today's minerals that I covered four macro minerals and one trace minerals. Today's topic is over. In next class, we will learn some more micro minerals. Thank you.